Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So in a previous video, I got some questions about some of the artifacts on the Onefinity user interface. And I wanted to dive deeply into some of these components of the interface to show folks how to use a specific area of the Onefinity to really amp up their ability to control their machine. And that specifically is the manual device interface or manual data input part of the user interface. This is where you can manually control your machine by entering G-code. So why would you wanna do that and what the heck is G-code? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that for a minute. So why would you want to manually enter codes into your CNC? Well, if the user interface doesn't allow you to do something specific that you're looking to do with a click of a button or easily through a series of clicks of buttons, then sometimes it just makes sense to go ahead and type in those codes manually and command your machine to do what you want it to do. And so how do you do that? Well, very simply, you use something called G-code and you manually run G-code commands using this MDI part of the interface. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what the heck is G-code? Now, if you've been around CNC's or even 3D printers, you've heard it before, you might not fully understand it. So I'm gonna walk you through the kind of basics of G-code to get you familiar with what it is and why you'd wanna use it. And then we're gonna jump over to the machine, show you how to actually control the machine and some of the things that I'd use the uh, manual data input interface for, for my machine. So what is G-code? It is a very simple text-based syntax comprised of a single letter and then a series of numbers or digits. Those numbers can range from one digit up to three digits and you can string these commands together to create relatively complex motions for your machine. And so G-code was first invented actually in the 1950s, first standardized in the 1960s and quite literally, it has not been updated since 1980. And so for those of you doing the math, that is 42 years ago. So all of our modern CNC machines, 3D printers, and a variety of other automated machines are using a specification or a syntax that literally has not been updated in 42 years. And so it's almost as old as I am. It might be much older than some of you watching this video, or you know, it might be just a little bit younger than some of you, who knows. But regardless, the, the syntax of G-code allows you to do lots of things, and because it is very simple, it is very easy for computers to read, interpret, and then turn into the motion that we need to create complex objects using our CNC or our 3D printers. So although we call it G-code, G is only one of the many letters that are included in the syntax of the computer language. And so G specifically is a preparatory command that prepares your machine for some sort of motion. There is M, which is a miscellaneous categories of things that you'll run across. Some other common things include X, Y, and Z, which allow you to command various components of your X, Y, and Z axis. You can also run into T, which stands for tool or tool changing, as well as S, which allows you to do things with your spindle. If you read your G-code, you might actually also see N. N simply stands for line number. It allows the machine to count where you are in your program. And then if anything goes wrong or if you have some sort of failure, theoretically, you can return to that line number or maybe the line number after it to complete your operations. If you have a 3D printer, occasionally you'll run across things for temperature and extrusions. So in this case, that is R and E. So a fun fact here, R is used for temperature control for a 3D printer because T was already used for tool control because the language was originally designed to control CNC machines and other rotary machines from a subtractive manufacturing perspective rather than additive manufacturing that you get with 3D printers. All right, now that we have the basics of G-code behind us and we kind of understand the structure of the G-code, let's go ahead and talk about some of the most popular commands that you're going to need and you're going to use uh, whenever we get over to actually using the MDI part of the user interface. And so for CNC machines specifically, you're going to run into things like G90, G91, 
uh, G20 and G21. And so these are uh, commands that you use that to initialize your machine and tell you what sort of operations you're gonna start with. So G90 is absolute programming mode. That's where you tell the machine the absolute distance that you want it to travel. And G91 is relative positioning mode. And that's where you tell it the relative distance that you want it to move. So in this case, it will move a certain distance from where it currently is. If you are in absolute positioning mode, it will do all of its calculations based off of the zero position. And so that's very important why you need to home and zero your machine before you start using it. So if you are using absolute positioning for some reason that the machine actually knows where it is supposed to go. G20 and G21 are also very important. This is where you specify whether or not the coordinates inside your computer program or inside your CNC program are in inches or millimeters. So G20 stands for inches and G21 stands for millimeters. And so if you don't set these two parameters, the positioning mode and your dimensioning mode, the subsequent commands might be interpreted inappropriately by the machine. So it's really important to know when you're looking at your G code whether or not it's absolute mode or relative and whether or not you are in uh, the imperial or metric version. Now with the imperial and metric just by looking at the G code it can be relatively apparent how far you're moving and what mode you're in if you're looking at your G code. It's not necessarily so apparent whenever you're in the relative versus absolute positioning mode but nevertheless anytime you're doing any sort of manual data entry you definitely want to start by specifying those two Two parameters, the positioning mode and your units. And if you don't do that, then the subsequent commands might not make any sense to the machine or it might, might, it might do things that it just simply doesn't understand and command it to do things that are not what you intended to do. All right, so now on to the money commands. These are the commands that you're most likely going to use all the time. And that really comes down to G0, G1, and G2. Now, generally, I don't think that I've ever actually used G2 for a manual entering mode, but it's possible that you might want to do that. So what is G0? G0 is a rapids move to a specific location for the machine. That is where the machine will move at its maximum speed to the location of specified, either relative or absolute as quickly as it can. G1 on the flip side is a move at the specified feed rate. And so the very first G1 command that you specify to the machine should specify the feed rate. If you don't specify feed rate for subsequent G1 commands or any of the other G commands, it will use the last set feed rate. So by that metric, you can either use the default basic feed rate, which most machines have one that is relatively reasonable. I'm not entirely sure what the Illinois Infinity's uh, default is, uh, but it's relatively modest if you don't specify one with the G command. Now there are plenty of other G commands and M commands and T and S commands and whatnot that you can use, but generally I don't usually use those whenever I'm trying to use my machine in manual mode. What I'm trying to do is position the machine in a very specific location, which only requires the use of the G commands. And so I encourage you to go out and check out some of the links that I have down in the description. I will leave links to the Wikipedia webpage, which is a more generic description of of G code. I will also leave links to their RepRap page, which I find very useful because it is comprehensive across CNC's as well as 3D printers. And then I will also link to the Camotix Buildbotix webpage, right? So Camotix is the software that Buildbotix uses to parse G code. But what is good about this, if you do have a Onefinity, it will tell you very specifically which commands are supported, which commands are not supported. So if you're looking to do something that might be a little bit more outside of the common or the normal, it will allow you to do that. So the last G code command that I just want to cover really quickly is G2. G2 is used to create arcs. Uh, so typically with some CNC machines that are not capable of supporting the G2 commands, what they will do to create circles or arcs is they will break them up into very small line segments, uh, which generates an awful lot of G code for a relatively simple geometry, uh, but allows the machine to move in essentially linear manner, reproducing a 
uh, arc or some sort of curve. So if your machine does support a G2, then there's special formatting for the G2 to specify kind of the radius and the arc diameters and things like this to get your machine to move in a very smooth operation so you can get the geometry that you're looking for. Like I said, I don't think that I've ever used G2 for any reason whenever I'm manually jogging my machine around using some of the commands, but it's there, it's at your disposal if you choose to do so. Some other useful G code commands include G28, which allows your machine to return to home. And then there are some uh, G54 commands that allow you to your machine to return to a set position. And so this could be particularly useful if you have a corner bracket on your machine and you know where zero is or you know where your workpiece zero is at all times, you can pre-program your machine to go to that position every single time without having really any question or variability about where your machine might go. Now this obviously depends on your machine homing and homing accurately. If your machine does not have an accurate homing cycle, um, then commanding it to the next relative position or the next absolute position will not achieve that level of maybe repeatability or accuracy you're looking for, but nevertheless, um, it is there for you to use. And I use this a lot whenever I had my X-Carve. I have not quite yet taken the time to set up my Onefinity and see if Onefinity supports this capability, but if it does, it's gonna be really awesome, and I do plan on using it in the future. All right, with that whirlwind sort of introduction to G-Code, I am going to cut over to the computer here, as well as my machine there, show you how to enter some commands in the user interface, show you some of the capabilities of it, just to kind of, uh, you know, do a general introduction to what the art of the possible is, and then talk about some of the other features of the user interface that use some of these commands, and then we will wrap it up. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get on with it. All right, so here we are over at the computer. I have another camera on the machine so you can see what happens in the machine while we're doing our magic with G-Code here. So a real quick user interface tutorial again for anyone who hasn't seen it. I do have a full deep dive into the user interface. If you wanna watch that video as well, I will link it above and below. So real quick, you have the number pad off to the side here that shows you, uh, allows you to move your machine around in a various directions depending on the units you have set here and the kind of center that has where the position of the machine and whether or not the machine has been homed and whether or not you've zeroed your machine. Down here there's some basic state information and then down here is where the money area is for what we're going to work on today and that is the difference between the auto which is where we spend most of our time with the machine and the manual data entry part which is what I want to show today. Before we get to the manual data entry part I just want to show you the auto window and show you some G code that has been loaded here. Here. And you can see that there is a uh, little bit of a text here up front that describes the G code. That's just an artifact of the post processor that I happen to use for this particular one. Uh, but right off the bat, the very first line here of the G code, it starts with the N code, which is the line number. In this case, it's line number 10. And it just increments every five from thereafter. Again, that is up to the choice of the post processor. No big deal. The first command is a G90 command, which puts it in absolute mode, which is is really interesting because down here at the end it has a G91 command which puts it into relative mode and you can string these G code commands along in a line here on a single line uh, but you do have to separate them with spaces if you have distinct commands. So the next line in the G code is the uh, G20 command and this is where we set imperial versus metric in this case it's setting it to imperial. Uh, this uh, G53 line is not really that important from a manual control perspective so we're just going to go ahead and skip over that. And then we're going to jump into the next line again, which is not terribly important necessarily to manual control, uh, but what it does is it sets the spindle speed at 18,000 RPMs and it tells the spindle to turn on. And then uh, G54 sets the work coordinate system. Again, not that important for manual control. However, it can be useful in certain circumstances. And then the next line is the first actual G code command, which is a G0, which commands the machine to move to a particular location. All right, so if we remember back just a few minutes ago in the video to the uh, G code tutorial, uh, G0 and G1 are the two commands that we're going to use most frequently. However, there are other commands that are important depending on what you're trying to do. One of them is G28, which is the home command. Now, home will return to your zero position. Uh, so in this case, I have already homed my machine. When you turn it on, it asks you if you want to home for the Onefinity. Click OK, and it went to home. But I have jogged the machine kind of into the 
center there. And so you can see from the position that it is no longer homed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to the MDI interface and, and then show you the process that I do whenever I do manual commands. And so right off the bat, again, I wanna start with a G90. I wanna make sure I know what I'm dealing with in terms of absolute or relative positioning. And then I want to set a G20 which tells me that I am going to be operating in Imperial mode. And you can see the drop down in here does say Imperial. If I were to change this the metric, then it would issue that metric command to the machine. All right, so now that we have those two basic commands entered, uh, let's go ahead and just show you some of the power of manual entering. And we're going to issue a G28, uh, G28. Now, I am pressing return because I am using a keyboard here. If you are using the screen and the manual entry there, then you might want to go ahead and click the play button. Both of them e work equally well. I just find that if I'm on the screen and I'm issuing commands manually, then the play button is a little bit easier than clicking return. So I'm going to go ahead and click play and watch the machine move, hopefully. And so you can see by issuing that command, it told it to go to the home position. And in the positioning on the screen here, you can see everything is zero because I have not changed my zero from the home position. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very briefly, I'm going to jog the machine over to a relative home position. I'm going to zero it and then show you the difference between the commands. So let me go ahead and run over there real quick. All right, so what did I do there? I just moved the machine to a relative location on my wasteboard system where I actually have two pieces of wood to create a 90 and I, I generally paste, placed the machine in that corner and then I zeroed the X and the Y, I did not zero Z. Z is still zeroed at the home position. And so let's just go ahead. If you wanna rerun a command G28 here, uh, you just click on it in the user interface and press play or press enter as well. And then it's going to now home. Where did it home to? It homed to the homing position, not to the zero position. And so G28 takes you home. Once you've honed your machine, it does not take you to zero, zero, zero. And so in this case, you can see in the relative position now, the absolute position is zero, 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 which is home. But the offset for me, because we did Imperial, right, is uh, 6.81 inches and 3.93 inches. Now, I think if you change it to metric here, um, it does redo the user interface and it shows you everything here. Now, the coordinates are negative, right? Because zero is in the lower right hand corner um, or the lower left hand corner in this case. So the machine I moved out and away from that. Uh, so to move it back home, that's what it is zero. And so this screen is really useful. If you have a setup like me where I have a corner bracket and I go to the same location to make repeated cuts, if you write that location down in terms of an offset, then you home your machine. You can very quickly get back to that position without manually zeroing out or homing or without manually zeroing your machine every single time. Now I do check, I jog there using some manual commands uh, and I do check, but then the only thing you need to do then is Z probe uh, or just manually uh, zero your Z. So that's really awesome and it's really great if you have a core corner unit like I do. All right, so now that we got that down, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some other commands that you can issue. So I'm going to switch back to Imperial mode so we know what mode we're in, right? And then talk about the go commands or the uh, the movement commands for the X, Y, and Z. So I mentioned earlier that uh, G0 and G1 really are the commands you're going to use most frequently to move your machine. So how do you formulate one of these commands? Well, it's really simple, again, because it's G code, it is a letter, it is a number, it is a letter, it is a number. So in this case, if we wanted to move the machine, say X one inch, for example, we say G one, we say X and we put a one. That says move the machine in the X direction one unit, in this case, one inch. So if we press play, it's moving very slowly because we did not specify the feed rate. Right? And so, well, you say, well, how do you specify the feed rate? Well, that's very straightforward. But before we get into that, I'm gonna wait for this to finish because it's making a little bit of noise. So through the internet magic, we're gonna cut away. So I made a little bit of a whoopsie there whenever I entered that command and I'm not gonna cover up any of my mistakes. So what I did is I commanded it go to an absolute position of one inch at essentially the slowest feed rate possible for the machine. Well, not the slowest, but a very slow feed rate. 
And so because it was already at a very negative number, it was going to take a really long time to get there. So I clicked the stop button and then I entered a new command, which is setting the feed rate at 100. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click play on this and it should move us to the absolute position of one inch at the feed rate of 100. And there you go. <laughs> All right, pretty straightforward. And so what you can see on the screen here is it went to the position of one inch from the home position or the zero position, right, which is actually an absolute position of seven inches, which is an offset of six inches. So this is really cool, right? So look at what you have on the user interface. It tells you that you are 6.1, 6.81 inches from home. You are 7.81 inches absolute from home home, but you are one inch from zero. And so this is the big deal between absolute and relative positioning. If we had it set in relative mode and I set it to one, it would move one inch from where it was, not one inch from the home position or the zero position. All right, so that's really cool. And I know that's a little complicated, so if you don't understand or you have any questions, leave them down below. So let's do something just a little bit more interesting. We're gonna say G1 again, we're gonna say X, we're gonna go to two inches this case, we're gonna go to Y, two inches. Now you can see Y currently is at a uh, zeroed position of a negative 3.9 three inches, uh, which is an offset relative from home of 3.93 as well. So what it's going to do is it's actually move significantly further in the Y direction than it's going to move in the X direction. So let's go ahead and play and let's see how this turns out. Now you will notice, again, uh, I did not set the feed rate in this specific command. It kept the feed rate from the last command. And so that's really useful. You do not have to set the feed rate every single time unless you want to change the feed rate. And so you can also issue the feed rate command independently from any movement command if you want to set the feed rate up front. So you could do that G90, that G20, and then an F100. In this case, it's 100 inches per minute. Or you could just include it in your very first go command or your G1 command command. So that's super cool, super easy. All right. So that quite frankly, that is all you need to know to navigate your machine in a manual movement perspective. So when you click these buttons again, all it's doing is it's issuing various commands based off your current settings. And so generally speaking, uh, if you want to find a very precise position and you write down either the absolute positions or the offset, right? And you know whether you're aware your home position was, which you should home your machine every single time you power it up, right? Then you know exactly where your machine needs to be and you can use that to your advantage if you want to do multi-day cuts I've done this before especially when I'm using epoxy right well I will set the zero position I will copy down the coordinates from the home then the next day go to that position make sure that it looks about accurate to where it needs to be and then start to the cut for the next day and so because the the homing of the onefinity is fairly reliable and it's very repeatable i've done some testing on that before so if you haven't seen that video i will link that above and link that down below as well but the because the homing is very reliable you can very quickly move to where you need to be in the sequence without a lot of questioning whether or not your machine is going to where it wants to go now with the stock user interface here, there would be no way to move to that precise coordinates, right? Unless you had some pre-programmed sort of mechanism inside the machine, but you can jump over to the MDI. You can type in your command and you can say, again, you want to start with the G90, G91, G20, G21. Make sure you're using those commands consistently. And you say, go to where you want to go. Now, one feature that I think has been requested many times from the Onefinity folks, uh, and I personally would want, is macros, where I can pre-program that because I do have that corner system in the same location every single time. So it would be lovely to have the ability to have just a one click or a two click option to just jump to that position rather than manually typing everything in every single time. But I actually have the coordinates written down on the wood there so I know exactly where they are. So it's not a big deal whenever I need to do that, but it's just a little bit of a hassle. All right, so uh, you know that's how you use the MDI, the manual data interface on the Onefinity. 
All right, well, that was a video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you can take some of these lessons and some of these things that I have taught you and apply that to your workflow so that you can optimize how you use your machine and really just make it more efficient and more effective for what you need to do. All right, uh, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. That really helps the channel and helps grow when you guys interact with me and we get to answer questions. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I do post pictures of projects like this to become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video. And don't forget to be inspired. So although we call it G code, G it, <clears throat> dang it. <laughs> if you are using a 3D printer, you will actually run into R and what else? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, an E, all right. All right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. I hope you learned something and I hope you can take some of these lessons and apply them to your workflow to really create more uh, optimizations in what you do and actually really dial in your machine and use it for all that it's there for you. <clears throat> all that it's there for you, that makes no sense.